All right, so I probably said this about the last video, but this one is probably the most important one because it's going to talk about specific study techniques, what you're actually doing day to day when you sit down and open your books to study. So <clears throat> to start, you know, I think I made my point clear here. One of the most important things is repetition and testing yourself. Okay, and you hear that a lot throughout school, but I kind of want to break down really how to do that um, when you're studying for the NPTE. And one of the things that I always um, tell students when I'm tutoring anatomy is learn things forward, backwards, and sideways. Okay, and it's easier to actually explain this through an example. All right, so learning something forward would be, um, the example is, what kind of AFO decreases knee buckling? So if you were asked that, um, and you're able to say, okay, it's a ground reaction AFO, then you've learned it forward. You're able to hear the question and provide the answer. Learning it backwards would be if the question was asked backwards. So what is the purpose of a ground reaction AFO? And now you know it's, bec it's to decrease knee buckling, to control um, an unstable knee joint, okay? So you learn it forward and back. And I think this is really important because sometimes when we're studying, we might make a connection and not realize it that we only learned it in one direction, okay? So you might know that the AFO that decreases knee buckling is a ground reaction AFO if you, if you were prompted with that question. It might trigger something in your brain to remember ground reaction. But if you were asked it backwards, you might not be able to tell me the purpose of it. So you have to learn everything both ways. I think that's really important. And then sideways is kind of just a different way of thinking about it. So any concept you're learning, when you learned it forward, you learned it backwards, now take an extra step to think about it in, in a different way. Just go the extra mile. So that way if you're on the test and you're asked about it, you've, already, you've made another association with that content. So, for example, we know now ground reaction AFO uh, controls for knee, um, knee buckling, knee excessive knee flexion. So, thinking of it sideways to, would be to ask, well, what muscle does a ground reaction AFO compensate for? And that would be uh, the weak, weak plantar flexors a lot of the time because they're not able to eccentrically control tibial advancement. The tibia goes all the way forward and your knee buckles. Okay? So, that way... If you're, if you're, you know, you don't know how the MPT is going to ask these questions. So I think it's really important to learn it forward, backwards, and sideways. And I made another example where I actually wrote it down for those people who study by writing in, in a notebook or something. I think it's great to, to use this technique for every piece of information you learn. Uh, don't just write down, uh, for example, sarcoidosis is a restrictive lung disease. Because you might forget that. So then you learned it forward, sarcoidosis is a restrictive lung disease. Now take it back. Can you name the restrictive lung disease? Would be another way to do it backwards. Can you name all of them? Um, or you can kind of ask yourself a test type of question. Uh, what restrictive lung disease is associated with uh, granulomas, which would be sarcoidosis? And now you've taken it a step further. And then take it a step further, learning it sideways, um, now, how does sarcoidosis affect lung volumes? How does it, uh, does it affect lung compliance? Sorry for my bad handwriting. And because it's restrictive, it's going to decrease both. And that's what learning it sideways will do. Now you're, you've went from other systems question to reviewing something from pulmonary. You've gotten an extra repetition remembering, okay, restrictive lung disease, decrease lung volumes, decrease compliance. Okay? So I think this is really important. When you're studying for the MPTE and you're even learning just basic things like what um, you know, what's the dermatome for the big toe, and you know it's L4, also be able to learn that backwards and sideways. Okay, um, so somewhere to say what's the L4 dermatome, you would know it's the big toe. It, it would be, it would be um, learning it backwards. <sighs> okay, so now another technique. I call the randomizer technique. So what the randomizer technique is, it's essentially repeating a very specific random piece of content every day, multiple times a day, 
regardless of what your main focus that day is. So these are examples that I use during the NPT studying because I kept forgetting it was the elbow open and closed pack positions. I kept confusing humeral ulnar, humeral radial, proximal radial ulnar. So I made sure to put that into my studying literally every single day so that I was repeating it um, enough, regardless of what my main focus that day was. The S1 dermatome was another one. I uh, made sure not to confuse that with L5, um, S2. Uh, um, absolute indications for exercise. I'm going to talk about why it's important to use the randomizer technique for long lists. Um, symptoms of hyperthyroidism was another thing I kept forgetting for some reason, so I had to make sure I used this technique. And I, I have an illustra illustration here to show what the randomizer technique is in application. And it kind of seems redundant. Okay, my main focus this day, I'm studying, I'm studying, I'm studying. And then I just throw something random in there, rheumatoid arthritis deformities. So now I'm looking at swan neck deformity, um, Boutonniere's deformity, and then I'm going back to whatever I was studying that day. Okay, but I just got an extra repetition of something that is most, you know, not most likely gonna be on there, but something that you, you need to know before you go into the MBTE. So example two of the randomizer technique uh, is just to demonstrate that obviously you could do more than one topic when you're doing this. Whatever your main focus is that day, you can add a bunch of different topics to randomize into your studying. Um, and the randomized topics usually should be specific. Uh, and you don't need to spend more than a minute on it even. If you want to just add one note card on what the hip capsular patterns are and randomize that into a day you're learning about pulmonary, I think that's a great thing to keep bringing stuff forward, even though it might feel a little unorganized. Um, and uh, another reason I put this up here is because if you sit down one day and do all the capsular patterns or all the open and closed pack positions, that could be very uh, confusing. And so sometimes the randomizer technique is great to just focus on one and that way you won't forget that one. And then maybe the next day do the knee capsular pattern, the next day do the ankle. Okay, so now you're you're not necessarily doing them all at one time and then confusing, oh, is flexion more limited here? Uh, you're, you're just learning that specific one that day and then bringing it forward over and over. And as, as the weeks go on, you want to increase the amount of randomizer topics you use. Uh, so I know you probably get the point at this point, but I wanted to add a third example to also show that this is great for memorizing lists of information um, even if you haven't studied that specific area yet, this might feel a little bit uncomfortable to do, but um, you know you're going to have to know something like uh, MCA stroke presentation or contraindications for eSTEM. So even before you do neuro or before you do modalities, just learn, just learn the contraindications specifically and put that into your randomizer technique. So that way you, you start to repeat them over and over, and by the time you get to modalities, at least that one part of it is over. And I think this could really help, although it might feel a little unorganized and scattered at first, I think it's going to really help you retain that information long term and not feel overwhelmed when you get to the modalities part of that of studying. And that's just an example, obviously. But All right, so going over the pros and cons of the randomizer technique and the learning it forward, backwards, and sideways, I think the pros far outweigh the cons in this situation. Uh, the pros are going to be increased carryover, a lot of repetition. Uh, you're going to be able to retain a lot of information with this technique. And it's going to decrease redundancy because you're seeing different information. Um, the cons, though, are it's going to feel a little bit unorganized. A lot of these study plans, I think, are to give you a sense of organization. So you're going through a certain amount of pages of therapy ed. It feels good. You're, you're going through the book like, like, like as if you're reading a book. You're getting further and further to the end. But it's not, that's not the best way to really learn the information. It just feels more organized. Okay, so it's going to require you to be more organized to make sure you know which parts of the therapy ed book you've done, which parts of the score builders book you looked at, because you're going to be randomizing the information you're learning. And kind of relates to having a decreased sense of security by not following a, a specific study plan. All right, so we know the techniques that we're going to use, but what do you actually do when you sit down... Uh, you have your books ready. What are you going to actually do to study that day? What's your day-to-day -day routine? So this is what my desk looked like. Not that organized, but this is how I, I set up my books when I was studying for the boards. I had the therapy ed book right in front of me. 
I had the score builders book above it. And then I had the book um, where the content was coming from, the primary books, to the right of me. So I have it labeled here, therapy ed book, score builders, and content book. And then I had my main notes. I use note cards, but whatever it is, if you use a notebook or if you type it on your computer, um, I had mine right there. And then I had my randomizer notes right above it so that I could randomize those while I was studying whatever topic I was studying that day. Uh, the next page obviously is the same thing with the books open. Uh, but I just want to point out that uh, the, content book, the content book obviously is going to vary depending on what you're learning. In this case, it was a differential diagnosis book, but that could that content book content book is the one that's going to change. Therapy ed and score builders stay the same. They kind of guide your studying, but you're using the content book to really read it and get your information that you're going to learn for the boards. Um, and if there are discrepancies between the books, which there are, go with the content book because that's where the boards are are generally going to take their questions from. So another common question I was getting asked was, do I study based on the time or do I study based on how much content I've gotten through? And I'm highly going to recommend, although it might be variable from day to day, that you base your studying on a timer. Okay, The amount of time itself will vary significantly uh, depending on where you are at in your clinicals or if you are off or in what month you're taking the exam. But either way, uh, a timer is really important to build your exam endurance because you're not just learning the content remember you're you're forcing yourself to sit in one position and think about physical therapy information for a long time the NPT tests your ability to do that as well so I think that studying with a timer uh, forces you to build your exam taking endurance um, and the next slide like I said some people recommend studying number of pages completed but um, it doesn't build your test taking endurance and you might subconsciously rush through material because your focus is getting on getting through pages and instead of where a timer is on now you can focus in on certain material and even if that one thing takes you a lot of time that's okay because you really learned it all right so those are my tips for now section two is something i'm gonna i'm gonna make videos for another day um but i hope this helped you guys